Hello everyone, welcome to episode 6. This episode we're gonna go uh, see the, the changes to the kit because Arjum just patched the, the jumping. He made a wall slide uh, with a new visual effect. And also I did not cover the red um, the red player yet. He has double jump which unlocks uh, possibilities for uh, uh, secret places and, st and whatnot. So um, also I did a, a, a few other um, new things in this episode. Like a cutscene, a cinematic cutscene. So we're gonna go through the stage, and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go through the, the secret area that is, is uh, doable with uh, red, since it has double jump. And then I'll show uh, how I did it all. How I did it all. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, the picture on this stage is uh, a streamer, uh, a Mega Man X speedrunner named Caleb Art 42 If you don't know him and you like Mega Man speedrunning, I suggest uh, watching his uh, Mega Man speedrun. He's very entertaining person. So now we see, oh my god, the red player is dying! Not yet! We haven't even tested you yet! You're adopted! What? <laughs> well, so that's just more of my dumb humor. So now we're gonna, gonna do that, we're gonna play with him. So obviously we're not gonna kill him, we're gonna play with him. So we're gonna go. Oh my god, this is a non-smoking area. I am the law. <laughs> just trying to make the stage funny. So now we see that we have a lot of advantage having double jump. Like ladders, that's for poor people. <laughs> but uh, in all honesty, I put a trigger on the other side, look what it does. Oh my god. <laughs> so I turn this into a killable monster. I think it's very cool. But now, since we have double jump, we can take this air. Weapon. I wonder if that guy is probably an asshole. <laughs> Joking, it's not an asshole. So now we can do some double jump magic to access secret area. Should listen to those signs. Uh, uh, I wanted to put the, the particle effect uh, going from the monster, but uh, I half asked it. <laughs> Whatever, it's not important. Now we have, it, I, instead of exiting the stage upon killing, I put exit because Mustache Man personally took the spaceship and now he's very cold. You see, he has a cold coming out of his mouth. We need to, to go to him to exit the level. Great is that, guys. <laughs> so I'm just gonna show you um, quickly the new things that I had not covered uh, in the previous episode. So this is a regular stage. This was uh, stage four to begin with. I took stage four. I reskinned it uh, slightly, you know, but uh, well, because only the, I only use it for this first scene, where you see uh, him on the floor, which is a sprite which on it I put um, the animator and then the animator I put the, the death animation which is basically uh, only the sprites that uh, like this one from this one until uh, the last one and then it cycles to them at this speed right here I think it makes a good uh, oh I'm dying animation so this is what I did then, um, video player is the video player that is there. Play on awake. Wait for the first frame. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to make this bigger. Yep. So, um, but that's just important. The video event is the important part. It's uh, simply um, an empty object that I renamed. I put the is trigger collider, which allows us to use the object detector script. The object detector script allows us to do like... If the player touches the collider, which is the green box, so as soon as we walk here, the video scene appears. So then we say, okay, uh, set active this object, which is play on awake, so it's gonna play the video right there. And uh, yeah, and uh, 
pause the background, otherwise you hear the background music. I really wanted to keep the effect. You hear the, the tragic scene, so it's important to pause the music. And when you exit the sequence, uh, you want to um, to deactivate the video, deactivate uh, his sprite, show the explosion animation because his suit exploded or whatever. Then you close the, the video window, otherwise it's going to stay uh, blank uh, like, uh, you know, you will listen a, a video with a VLC player or whatever. When the video is over, you just have the like the frame and the blackness. It's going to do the same here, so you need to turn it off. And then I resume the, the music. So it was simple to figure out, you know. Uh, it's pretty cool. So then I tried to do a change player event thing, but the way this works is the... Um, here I tried to play around with the index, but it only seems to solicitate the index upon loading the stage. I did not want to spend uh, hours to figure out uh, how to uh, change while in the same stage the character. So what I did is simply put um, an exit point. Um, well, usually w you would put the exit point on top of where the player is when he talks, so he gets the whatever. You would put it like on the full size of the screen. So as soon as the video ends, the collider will touch the player and it will zone you. Since I'm just making this uh, to showcase, I, I'm just jump after the, the cutscene, you know, who cares? And when I touch this, it's uh, going back to stage five. So stage five, I copy pasted, I, I not copy pasted, I control D duplicated stage four, and, but I, I just really need to come back a few seconds, please. Back, sorry about that. So as I was saying, I, I just made this scene uh, in order that we can have the, the cutscene and then force a, a change of scene, which we go to scene 5. It, it was just more easy for me. And I, I recommend uh, techniques, strategies like this. You avoid such a headache when <laughs> when when you, you know a way to do something and it works. Sometimes you just go with it. And it's what I did. I did not need the, the stage 4 for more than just the first screen. Now it leads to stage 5, which is the same stage. But this one, I worked on it. This one is the one that I changed, that I reskin everything, and uh, and so on. So in this one, there is no cinematic. You start the stage, and this time you start with the head player. Um, whatever. Character manager. Start with the head. <laughs> I could have just changed the index, but it was like, I don't even want the possibility of it not being red, so I put red all over. Who cares? This <laughs> this stage is red proof. There will never be a blue player in it. <laughs> so, yeah. So players start there. We start the level. I just put some pictures. Like I said, go on Twitch. This is his name on Twitch. If you like uh, Mega Man speedrunning, he's very en energetic, uh, a bit vulgar. But I guess he's a bit like me. But uh, whatever. Better at Mega Man, <laughs> a whole lot better. Um, yep. So that's just a monster a skin. Nothing to see there. The same thing here. It's uh, just a trigger, a trigger for the digger. The trigger is a collider on his trigger, and then I attach an object detector, which is set on player. You could write uh, whatever you want there. You know, if you have a moving monster and you want the moving or uh, whatever. There's, uh, but the actor that I want, the object to tag, object, the thing in the hierarchy, is player. I want, if the player touches this green square, which is the top of the ladder, I want the monster, which is the digger, to appear. And you look, the digger is right here. This is the monster that appears. This is a reskin monster. Now, if you wanted them to move, we would just take the script from previous episode, drag and drop it here, right? A, a drag component, then it would say, Oh, I want him to move uh, when he appear from there until there, and then when he, when his X cards appear to be him falling in the spikes, make him disappear and play the explosion animation spike. Just it's, it's as as easy as this. So aside from that, uh, here there was the platforming. Normally, the stage you go there, you go through all of this. This this was the the place that was glitched. Uh, in, uh, episode two or three, and then you have to do all of that. But me, I put a teleport right there, that put right next to the boss room. So you can either take the gel pack to grab the freeze thing, 
and then if you're blue, hmm, no, even if you, oh, I don't know, if you freeze it, you jump while you're in air, you switch to the gel pack, it lands on top of the enemy, you bounce on it. I would need to test, can we put a gel pack on top of a frozen monster? If we can, then blue can access the, the teleport. If we cannot, then only red can. So whatever, the teleport is just uh, a game object. No, so that's the detector to play the, the Komasan music. <laughs> it's the same principle than of the tank. If player touches it, what do you do? Uh, play sound. <laughs> it's, it's as simple as that. So uh, we're gonna test the whole gel pack thing on the monster because I'm curious. Otherwise, uh, that was it. Same here, I put a, an item, breakable block, and I just put as a children the, the appearance of the door. And then I do, oh, when you break, I want you to also play the explosion animation and stuff. So when I hit it with a sword, the breakable block breaks, the appearance of the door disappears, and there is an explosion uh, visual. It's very easy to do. Uh, with this kit, it's very easy. The boss, uh, I, I touched it, I screwed around with it, that's why I, I, I broke him, he just goes to the left and... Nyeh! So, <laughs> don't screw with the, the, the bosses if you don't know what you're doing, because uh, I broke something and I was like, dude, I'm not gonna like start the stage over because I broke the boss. <laughs> I'm not gonna reimport it. I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's not important. I, and the point of the stage was to show you uh, how to make cinematic and uh, to show the red player and to show that uh, the jump has been uh, repaired. So um, I think that's about it for this episode. Uh, I personally think it, it, it's a great, great thing to know how to put cinematic. I went with the strategy to just be done with the thing, you know, <laughs> because of change, the change player thing. I tried uh, making a script that changes the index, and while I, I saw it, uh, yeah, you see here the traces of my tentatives. You see here, like, uh, okay, activate the red trigger. Uh, yeah, that was uh, not good stuff from earlier. Uh, whatever, it's, it's incomplete traces. But I tried some stuff, and I was like, you know what, let's just change scene I put the exit there and the exit uh, prefab that we took from the tutorial stage you just put the name of the stage <laughs> it works bam change stage so you go into fake fake stage 4 which is stage 5 you know I think it's a it's a good way to, to integrate cinematic without having uh, without having to go nuts <laughs> it's very cool at least I hope that you enjoyed this uh, this episode which uh, prob probably is the last for now because uh, I've half patched feline realms. Now I need to go attack the other half. Uh, a lot of complications because uh, because um, stuff like let's say my capybara, capybara uh, saves in the player prefs, but now it's a multi save slot. So now um, I I'm like okay, do I integrate a capybara individually into each save slot but then i i was like oh i think it's so much better if the capybara is actually a way to transfer items between save games so it turns out that the way that i uh, rewired my capybara bank after patching uh, the 2d rpg kit uh, the capybara now uh, has a added bonus effect that you can put items on it then you you load you load another save game. You go see the capybara. He has the items from the other game, so it becomes a one bank per account. You know, in the MMORPG, uh, you have uh, in every capital city you have a bank. You can put items. So uh, it was not even wanted to be this way, but it turns out to be this way. That with the new save system, my old capybara turns out to be. Uh, this uh, multi save slot system <laughs> i think it's amazing but all that being said that's one of the things that went well there's other things that don't go so well um easy stuff easy stuff is just that uh, i'm very busy this week a lot of appointments my head is not that much into it so i just wanted to finish this mega man thing i think it i think it's a great episode if, even though i speak too much um and i will finish patching feline realms and i will make a devlog for uh, like yay look at my game it is patch now what do I do next uh, blah 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 so I'm gonna make a devlog episode otherwise um, yep so thank you very much to stick around and I will see you in uh, Feline Realms to the RPG Kit territory yeah.
thank you very much for staying until the end. Uh, if you like the content, please do uh, subscribe, so uh, we'll get to the next YouTube step soon. Thank you.